We're sowing aubergines and peppers today on Pots and Trowels, and that's brought to you with the support of King Seeds and Cobra Garden. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trowels. Well, here we are now, middle of February. I'm going to be doing some seed sowing again this week in the greenhouse. And from now on, there's going to be lots of seed sowing over the coming weeks and a couple of months. But what I'm sowing today are aubergines and sweet peppers. These are going to be grown for a crop later on in the summer. But both of these, which are members of the Selenum family, they need to start off fairly early. So they're going to need a little bit of heat to get them going in a propagator and be kept frost free. But we need to give them quite a long growing season. So something that you can be starting at this time of the year. So we're going to do that inside. And of course, if you're pottering around in your greenhouse, great thing to do is listen to a podcast, something I've got into. And we happen to have a Pots and Trowels podcast. If you haven't heard it, we put one out every Sunday morning. We talk to somebody from the world of horticulture, answer a few questions, uh, give you a few jobs to be doing in the week. Jill shares one of her recipes some weeks. Sean joins us as well. So if you are into podcasts, you can find the Pots and Trowels podcast on your normal provider. This week, we're going to head into the woods to talk snowdrops. Mm, and I'm very excited because I found a bit of a bargain on eBay, which we'll talk about later. Back to sewing. Um, what we need to do is to sow them into a compost. So I've got some compost here. This is a, a peat-free compost that I've sort of gone through to break up all the lumps. Any, any woody bits, this is probably coir and little bits of wood in it like that. We don't want those for seed sowing. I'm just going to throw those on the garden. Um, they're fine, they'll rot down, but we need a nice friable compost that the roots can grow down into. And I always add a little bit of perlite. That's the little white bits here, which is an expanded volcanic rock. It just helps with the air movement and the drainage through this compost uh, so we get good germination. When it comes to the pots, then these are going to be sown in small pots and when the seedlings are big enough we'll transplant them and into pots individually, we'll prick them out. So you can use little clay pots and that's fine because we're only going to probably sow eight to ten seeds of each one. So easily get that number of seeds in there. The thing about clay pots is they are really difficult to get over watered. So if you've got a compost that is prone to getting wet and soggy, clay pots are good because they're porous and they absorb some of the moisture and drain well. So that's something worth thinking about. Of course, plastic pots are perfectly okay. That's what we tend to use more these days. Um, you don't need a big pot again. And I save mine and just reuse them time and time again. So they're not single use. These have been used many, many times. So I think what we're going to do, though, is put them in the clay pots today. So I'm going to do two pots, one of each. Um, very simple. So we've got our loose compost here. And I'm just going to trickle that in to the, the pot and then level it over like that. And we'll do, we'll do both pots at the same time. So level it with my hand and then fill that one also. What we don't want to be doing is firming it down like that. That's the worst thing we can do. It squashes all the air out and it's just going to get wet and soggy. So never ever do that. We want it to be friable and drained and aerated. So that's all we need to do. Now we can just give them a, a tap and or if you've got a little presser or bottom of a pot, just to give us a level surface. I just think it makes it easier for sewing. So I'm not compacting it down. I'm just giving it a nice level surface to space the seeds onto like that. And I'm just going to brush that away. The reason I like to brush that away is if you drop a seed, you can find it on the wooden bench, but you can't find it if it goes into the compost. So starting with the pepper. So let's take the seed. So this is a, a variety I've not grown before. This one is called Red King. Um, it ripens to red. Like all peppers, it starts green and then ripens. So that's going to be a good one that Jill can use. And then I'm going to put the seeds on my hand like that. Um, and I'm going to sow all of those because we want to grow a few pots and probably give a few away as well. So I'm literally, because these are quite large seeds and visible, I am just going to spread space them around so they've all got the same amount of growth. When we sow any type of seed, the idea is that they should have an even amount of space so that they'll all get the same chance of growth, basically. So just space those like that. So they're 
fairly even on there. And I'm going to put my label in there straight away because I'm growing or sowing more than one type. Then we'll do the aubergines. Might as well do those as well. Similar sort of seeds. And then just pop those out. And so just slightly different size, but again, quite easy to handle individually. So I'm just going to again, space those onto there. Nice and evenly. Like that. One there, one there. And you can just move them about a little bit with your fingernail. So we've got a nice even distribution. And again, put the label in there. So at this point, we can't get them mixed up. And then we can cover them. Now, two ways of covering them. One way is I often cover them with compost. And what I do is I use a little sieve, just like this here. And I'll do it actually on the bench to show you. So if you imagine this is our pot of compost we've sewn on, I would put my compost in there and then I would just gently tap it over. And you can gauge depending on the spot you're sewing, but you know, you want two or three millimeters on there. And you can see if I draw my finger through it, that's a nice even covering. I'm not going to use compost though today. What I'm gonna use is a product called vermiculite. It's what's used an awful lot in the trade. Lots of nurseries use vermiculite um, because what it will do, it will coat the seeds in this. It holds the moisture around them so it aids germination. And it also means when they start to germinate and push through, instead of having to push through the compost, which can cap over, uh, this will just mean good germination and they will push through without any problems at all. So all I'm going to do is just get a little bit in my hand and I'm just, basically going to sprinkle that on and I'm probably putting on five millimeters about what's that about a quarter of an inch because they will grow through that really easily there's there's no resistance for them growing through it so they'll push through very evenly and easily so just again just put a bit of that on there it does blow around so if there's a bit of a breeze just be careful and then just shake it to level it and that is it that's as simple as that and then what we're going to do is put these in a little propagator so i've rigged up a small propagator in the greenhouse just here and um, this is just a little propagator quite inexpensive it's plugged in through an extension back to there it's got a, a soil warming element in there which is all built in and it is literally if i just look on this it is only eight watts so it's very, very little heat, but it does provide that base heat. And it's got in there a piece of capillary matting, which I've moistened, and that just creates the humidity. And then they can stand on there like that. And then what I'm gonna do is just give them a, a drink to settle them in. Doesn't matter if you spill a bit of water onto your capillary matting, because that will just evaporate up. And we do need that humidity. So they're watered. And then we can pop our lid on there like that. And that will keep them at a lovely temperature at about 15 to 18 degrees centigrade, which I think is about 60 to 65, 70 Fahrenheit, which is the perfect germination temperature. And about 10 days, maybe a fortnight, we'll get little seedlings through there. And then when they're at the size to prick out, I'll show you how to do that. But if you haven't got a greenhouse to put them in like this, then what you need to do is probably on a windowsill, a light, windowsill again in a little propagator in a warm room but they do need that warmth to get them to germinate and then we can get them growing and enjoy lovely peppers later on in the season. Thank you for watching Pots and Trowels and we'll be back again next week when we're going to be doing some work in the borders. So we'll see you then. Bye.